You know how when you blow up a balloon, each time you blow into the balloon, it gets a bit bigger? In some ways, that's how a lot of anime are created. With each exhale, a new idea that fills the balloon. In turn, it also makes the balloon just that much bigger. And a lot of directors or creators thinking of new ways that they can fit more air into that balloon. Blowing into this balloon is an art. It takes skill to not blow it up too slowly, which leaves us very bored watching. Equally, if the creator rushes so much out and pushes their ideas, the balloon will quickly burst like a virgin okay, at sorority you. house. You need an expert's touch the precision to make the perfect product for your audience. Unfortunately for all of us, the director of Higihiro decided to blow as much as he could into that balloon as possible, and it popped right into his face. Let's get into it. Our story begins with one of those awkward moments that just radiates to everyone in a mile radius. You know one of those situations, when someone is having a bad social encounter with another person, and it's just clearly obviously not going that well but you've had to sit there and suffer the secondhand embarrassment anyways? Yeah, that's what's going on here. I can't be the only one that finds these sort of things really, really uncomfortable. Just the thought alone shoots a little bit of chills up my spine, actually. But besides this difficult scene, we get offered something else. An introduction to two of our characters, our main protagonist Yoshida and Big Booba who becomes entirely irrelevant after 5 episodes so she doesn't deserve a name. Yoshida is the source of all of this radiating embarrassment as he tries to ask Big Booba out, but apparently she's taken. So like any good god-fearing man, Yoshida calls up his boy and gets absolutely hammered. This whole situation reminds me of every Tuesday night. Oh, why won't someone love me? When the drinks finish flowing and the night is almost done, Yoshida on his way home spots a girl under a lamppost. Drunkenly, Yoshida approaches her and begins to talk. Well, I, I, I say talk, but what I really mean is that this lamp goblin attempts to have sex with Yoshida for a place to stay. She's clearly under the age, and because our man doesn't want to end up on any, you know, list, he smartly refuses her proposition, but still does something equally as weird giving their age difference, which is letting her stay over regardless. I think Yoshida still has a chance to end up on that list and when he does he'll have to go around introducing himself saying hey i'm yoshida i'm a sexual offender because i let an underage runaway sleep in my house oh you have a daughter well if uh she ever needs a place to stay i i live in apartment j the next morning the runaway actually turns out to be our only other relevant character for the remainder of the show her name is sayu in this scene sayu grants yoshida his wish from last night breakfast or more aptly in the situation soup this wholesome moment quickly gets us into some weird waters when they start talking about Yoshida's rejection and discussing boobas, well, big boobas. The situation doesn't get any better as Sayu starts talking about her own boobs and it actually shows them too. And I understand this is meant as an attempt to seduce Yoshida because from all of her previous experiences with men, they just wanted her for sex. But that doesn't make this scene any less weird to me. These weird waters are also not done giving yet sailor. Sayu unsurprisingly attempts to sleep with Yoshida again. But no luck this time champ, maybe the next few attempts will be different. Conversation between the two shift, but it doesn't get any happier, it actually becomes very dark and sad. Sayu reveals how she's been jumping from place to place, living with random guys in return for sex. It's actually really disturbing just thinking about it, someone so young having to endure something so horrific just for survival. After unloading all of this, it suffice to say the relationship starts off a bit uneasy, but Yoshida being an actual stand-up guy offers to let her stay with him until she goes back to wherever her home is, with one condition, that if she ever tries to sleep with him again, she'll get kicked out immediately. Let's see how that pans out. This agreement sets into motion their unique father-daughter relationship. It's also agreed in return for a place to stay, Sayu has to do all the chores around the house, which mostly just include making dinner and cleaning. A pretty good deal to live rent free if you ask me. Yoshida buys Sayu a futon and some new clothing. And that's just the first episode. Overall this opening episode did an amazing job getting me invested in both of their lives. It's clear from the get go that Yoshida is doing this because he's actually a decent person, and never comes off as a predatory creeper, not having any ulterior motives other than getting Sayu on the right path again. It also lays the foundation for the mystery of why Sayu ran away, why she hasn't gone back, what pushed her to do all of this. Those questions spurred me on, they kept me watching week after week. All of her mystery made the show very enjoyable, in an admittedly weird way to say the least. I'll just be very forefront with my opinion on this show so far. I think the first 7 episodes of this anime are some of the best drama you could ask for. The moments between Sayu and Yoshida feel real most of the time, their interactions are organic and never forced. These scenes are what kept me 
invested in the show. Unfortunately, a lot of the scenes where the two are separated come across as hollow and boring most of the time, almost like they need to reach a quota of some sorts. An example being when Sayu begins a part-time job. She gets into a tense situation where she has to work with one of the people she stayed with previously. My initial thought for this dynamic started out as, oh, is he going to tell everyone? Is he going to blackmail her? It just kept me on the edge of my seat. And when he does do something, it all boils down to nothing rather quickly. The worst part about this is after their moment both become somewhat docile and actually start beginning to act like friends when about two days ago we tried to sleep with her again. It's lame how some grand moments mean absolutely nothing for the anime as a whole. The constant build up attention for a lukewarm conclusion is all too relevant here. And I think the blame actually has to go towards the side characters. All of them are flat, each one becoming a sideshow very quickly. I felt like there wasn't enough time to flesh out any of these characters. Every female character does that usual harem thing where they fall for the main protagonist, each one either admitting or secretly having a crush on him, and then it just fizzles out and is completely forgotten for the rest of the show. There are no conclusions to these arcs. One moment's like, I'll do anything for you, then the next episode, erased from the plot. Doing this means there isn't much to say about them. There's Big Booba, Small Booba, and Sayu's friend. Big Booba and Small Booba both have an episode dedicated to each of them. But again, after the halfway point, none of these side characters even exist in the eye of the plot. There's no purpose. Their only purpose is to serve as padding for the length. A positive takeaway from this is the attention the main characters got, especially Yoshida. He never reminded me of the cookie cutter, always good, aloof sort of protagonist. Instead, what he reminds me of most is an actual human being, existing in shades of grey rather than just black and white. And this is awesome to see. My favorite characteristic is how he actually speaks his mind with confidence, always pursuing his goals and never being put down by negativity, and also not being a dick about it. Sadly, this causes Yoshida to have a tendency to be too headstrong strong. A great example of this is letting a 17 year old high schooler live with you. While in spirit this is a good thing to do, it's a bit odd in the eyes of society. There's actually a running joke in the anime. Well, I'll call it a joke, it's not very funny. That basically boils down to, what are you going to do about Sayu? You know this is illegal. And he goes, yeah I know, but I think I'll let her stay here for a little bit. While his reasoning is understandable, if he doesn't protect her, then she'll go off and continue to prostitute herself. It's a double edged sword that doesn't have a correct answer. This conundrum takes Yoshida's character and brings him to life, one who's overall just super interesting. And ask yourself, what is the right choice in this situation? Call the cops maybe, push her out just to protect yourself, or even let her stay and potentially suffer the consequences. It's a great moral dilemma. This hypothetical brings us to the runaway herself, who turns out to be the central character in Higihiro. She is the one who causes every event, all the tension, and honestly the entire reason for the show. If she wasn't there, this would just be watching a salaryman going to and from his job every day. Which honestly doesn't sound that bad now that I'm thinking about it. Regardless, from the start, Sayu starts off as super spoiled, almost to the point of naivety. This naivety is what brought her to think what she is doing isn't that bad. And when Sayu does disclose this for the first time, it instantly forces you to think, holy shit this anime is going to bring out the feels. And it does episode after episode. Something else I really enjoyed about these two characters is the development they received. Yoshida goes from being a boring busybody who only goes with the motions, into someone who is very motivated and actually takes care of himself. While Sayu gains life experience and grows much more mature learning from Yoshida, but then that metaphorical balloon pops. Higihira as a whole suffers from over-escalation, each and every event trying to one-up the last, similar to a thousand hands just trying to tug on your emotions. In an attempt to keep you invested and at the beginning it works, this reminds me a lot of the ASMR channel on Twitch. Now that's good content. But this content can only be good for so long, and Higihiro is a prime example of that. Without spoiling anything, the biggest reason why I think most people tuned in every week was for the eventual revelation as to why Sayu ran away. It made Mondays feel a lot less like Mondays, so much less gloomy because we are waiting for this gloomy ass show to rip our hearts out and stomp all over it. And like clockwork, it did just that for a while. But then, when our characters sat down and started to discuss exactly what caused this whole runaway situation, the very act that bended her will and crushed her stamina until she resorted to prostituting herself, it, uh, falls flat. 
It just comes across like a wet noodle slapping your arm. It was the easy option and the revelation felt that way. I just couldn't see how it pushed her to go so low to abandon everything she knew and the culprit is over escalation. It had to be something incredible or else it just couldn't keep up. And it, and it wasn't, but maybe this is just me. And that's the worst because at the beginning of the show, it wasn't following the rails. It was doing everything unexpected with an intense introduction, something that I don't think I've ever seen before in an anime show, mature different protagonists that we don't get every day, a weird dynamic that keeps us interested in so many different ways it could have gone, but everything afterwards just felt a bit by the books until the show finished. And with this lukewarm feeling, and while the interactions between Sayu and Yoshida remained relevant, relatively unchanged, the story, plot, and all other characters drift away one by one into irrelevancy. And that's a shame, Higiyara had a strong foundation, a potentially interesting cast of characters, realistic situations, and interactions. The list goes on and on, but it couldn't keep up week after week, and that is what makes the show mediocre at best. Maybe the manga feels less rushed and actually fleshes everything out, but that doesn't change this show. In conclusion, I have to give this anime a 6 out of 10 at best. It falls short, started out amazing, and slowly petered off. If you're new to anime and love drama, instead watch your lion April, fruit baskets, or March comes in like a lion. If you're a veteran anime watcher, and you have nothing else to watch, you can give this a go, but it's really scraping the bottom of the barrel. But you might like it. That's all for me. If you made it this far, might as well subscribe.